All right. Hi, everyone. Great to see all of you. Great to see everyone's faces. Um, thank you so much for being on this call. I um, We have a lot of people here today, and I'm really excited because it is going to be a really exciting topic. Um, today, we're really talking about climate-friendly school food and school food menuing. So I'm going to pull up our slide. Um, does everyone see that? Okay. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. Great, awesome. So um, for those of you who haven't um, joined us before, my name is Nora. Um, I work with Friends of the Earth through our California Climate Friendly School Food Program. Um, and if you could all take a moment to introduce yourselves in the chat, and the holidays are coming, and I know the holidays bring a whole bunch of stuff, but I wanted to kind of have everyone share what your favorite part of the holidays is. Maybe it's time off of work, maybe it's time with the family. Um, just go ahead and stick that in the chat and introduce yourselves. Um, I am going to be recording this call. And then the way that we facilitate these calls within this peer-to-peer um, -peer learning series is it's really a mixture of presentations and discussions. So unlike maybe some other um, calls that you've been on, uh, this one is kind of really focused on discussion. So if you cannot participate in discussion and you want to listen in, my recommendation is actually to um, jump off this call and then we will send you a recording um, because we really want everyone to be participating. Um, so when we are kind of talking together, it would be great to have your videos on um, and just really participate. Uh, we would really appreciate all of that. We are gonna kind of do a new sort of policy if someone's kind of not there, we are going to end up kicking them out of the call just because we really want to kind of create a group dynamic where everyone is participating and being present um, and discussing because again, it's really like a peer learning series. It's not just, it shouldn't be just me talking. <laughs> um, so with that all said, this is an awesome call today. We're going to talk a lot about menu planning um, for climate-friendly foods. So when I talk about climate-friendly food, I'm really referring to uh, you know, uh, food that is low carbon and water footprint, so food that is plant-based, um, food that uses organic farming practices, and then also reducing food packaging and food waste and what's going in the landfill. So that's really what I mean when I talk about climate-friendly food. But for today's call, we're going to really talk about um, specifically plant-based school menuing and how to really um, kind of build out your menu for plant-based school food. And so the first part of the call, we're going to really talk about um, you know, plant-based recipes and kind of go into breakout groups around what recipes are really working for you. And then the second part of the call is going to be really focused on products and vendors and which products you're working with and what products have been successful, what haven't. Um, so we're going to go into all of that. And then just as a reminder, this is a monthly peer learning series. With that said, um, we're going to skip the month of January because it's a very busy month. So we'll, our next um, session will be in February. The way I'm kind of thinking about this peer learning series is there's kind of, it's like climate friendly menuing. This is part one. February will be part two because I feel like climate friendly menuing is a whole thing. Um, there's a lot of things to discuss, how to make how to make a creditable meal, what products you want, what recipes have been successful. There, there's a whole lot there. And we keep hearing that this is kind of the most important um, kind of topic. And so we're really going to dedicate two different sessions to this, um, today's session and then the one in February. And so if there's something that we didn't get to on this call, please let me know. And I will plan to, um, to make sure that we cover it during the next call. OK. I'm jumping right into things. <laughs> so one of the things that I just want to really facilitate as part of this group is to have um, us share with one another. And Emily is here today on the call um, with Santa Ana Unified to really talk about her plant-based menuing since they 
just implemented a new plant-based Wednesdays program. So I'm going to kick it off to her. Hi, everyone. So yeah, um, my first time here. So yeah, my name is Emily, and I'm here with Santa Ana Unified. I'm the nutrition specialist for the district. Um, I work more on the K-8 side of the menu. So I have toddlers, pre-K and K-8. And then my partner, Tracy, does all the high school uh, menus. But yeah, like Nora was saying, um, our district, we kicked off plant-based Wednesdays this year. So across the board for breakfast, lunch, snack, supper, we do completely plant-based. Um, and we do um, vegan menu. So it's not vegetarian. So we don't use any cheese or any animal products, any dairy products. It's completely um, plant-based. Next slide, please. Okay. So yeah, I just kind of want to share um, some of the items that we've been doing. Um, we do a little bit of scratch and semi-scratch, especially because we have such a large district here that we're trying to feed. On the K-8 side, we'll do about 20,000 lunches um, a day. So that's a huge effort um, to make all of those meals. So right now, some of the items that we have for breakfast, um, we actually just kicked it off today. Um, we did a plant-based sausage and seasoned potato breakfast taco. So we were able to get like some plant-based sausage. We had some seasoned potatoes and we put it together in a little bowl. And then it was on the side, we had some tortillas so the kids can choose to um, build it into like tacos. Um, so we just kicked that one off today. I was looking over the survey results and it looks like we got about mm, 65, 35. So 65% were like, yeah, we like this item. 35, we're still a little iffy on it, but overall that's pretty good compared to um, our oatmeal. Hasn't been as much of a hit, but we do have an horchata overnight oats that we've been doing. You'll see that in the bottom picture. So um, it's, it's basically oatmeal instead of putting um, like milk or water in it, we, our chef makes um, orchata and they put it into the oats to, and we let it sit overnight. And it's usually topped with like berries. So usually blueberries, they tend to like blue and strawberries a couple of times. And then on the side we have um, granola. So that's like some of our breakfast stuff. And so we've mainly focused on breakfast for now, but now we have um, some new things coming soon for lunch on our K-8 side. So we have a spaghetti with meat sauce coming soon. And we also have a sloppy joe recipe coming soon. So those are more of like our scratch cook or semi scratch cook things that we have. We also have the different IW items that we've been um, just kind of like rotating through the menus. We do cereal for sure. Um, we have bagels that we do with like, um, what's it called, like a chickpea spread. So we have uh, like chocolate chickpea spread, or they also have like apple butter um, chickpea spread that we do with the bagels um, rather than like cream cheese because we can't use that. And then for lunch, we do um, like bean burritos. We do the typical PB&J or sun butter sandwiches. Um, and then we also have a lot of plant-based chicken items. So we have it in all the forms like sandwiches, tenders, nuggets. That tends to be a pretty big hit, especially with the little kids. Then next slide. And so a little bit about the high school um, items that we have. So same thing, we have a lot of scratch and semi-scratch items. Um, let's see, so for breakfast, we have like a lent lentil picadillo that we serve on like a tostada shell. And then for lunch, you'll see some of the pictures here. Um, the bottom one is a spicy buffalo cauliflower wrap that they serve at the high school. And um, they also do bean and rice burritos that they make from scratch as well. And one of the new items that they had, and same thing today was the first day that they tried it at the high school. Um, they came up with a spicy marinara pasta. And this one's pretty cool because the pasta is actually a lentil-based pasta. So it actually counts as a protein. Um, for the meal. So we do the spicy marinara pasta, they let that cook, and then they serve it with a dinner roll on the side. Yeah, so a lot of those items are really good. And if anyone would like to see any of our recipes or has any questions, um, we'd be more than happy to, to share. Those are um, both mine and Tracy's emails if you have any questions or would like to see any of those. Thanks, Emily. Um, does anyone have any questions for Emily? I have a question. Sure. Um, yeah. What was what was like the process of introducing plant based Wednesday to the students? Because when I serve students, whenever there's a plant option, they always go with meat instead. So I'm just curious, like, what was how was like your buy in with like 
to students? Yeah, so I think that's something that we maybe didn't do the best job at, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. Um, it was kind of like an initiative that our board was really interested in in kicking off this year. So it was kind of like, you know, we were told that, hey, we're going to be doing plant-based Wednesday. Um, we did, you know, send out flyers and we did send out emails and things to like the parents. But um, yeah, I would say that honestly, like maybe 50-50 of the kids actually read the menu and know that it is plant-based, <laughs> especially with like a lot of like our chicken items and stuff. They're like, oh, that's plant-based. They have no idea. So I I don't know that I have the best advice on that end because I feel like we're actually trying to like backtrack a little bit and try to like let the kids know and tie that in with education. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, I guess kind of what I have to say about that. <laughs> And I think we have Sarah raise her hand and then I'll I'll call on Sally. Yeah, hi. Um, I was just wondering, I know you mentioned you guys debuted a recipe today, your potato taco, and you mentioned having survey results already. And I was just wondering how you guys go about survey or surveying in real time with 20,000 students. Yeah, so what we do, um, we use a lot of Google Forms um, for the most part. So we'll usually, um, we have like a template that we follow. So we ask like a certain set of questions every single time we release a new item. Um, usually try to keep it really simple. And for the first round, um, we usually just send it out to our site supervisors. So they're able to chat with the kids and kind of give us like a quick snapshot at each of our school sites as to how like the recipe went over. So in the morning or the afternoon before we're going to start, we're just going to serve it. I'll send that out and I'll remind everyone like, hey, as soon as you're done serving, please don't forget to fill out the survey. And they're really good about it. So um, yeah, we're able to collect it in real time. Usually by the end of the day, we'll have almost all the sites have given us their, their feedback. Thank you. You're welcome. Sally, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I wanted to know if the chicks the chickpea spread was a commercial product or if it was uh, something they made themselves? That's a commercial product. Okay. Awesome. And then Emily, do you want to quickly, before we move on, just share about your cool, awesome food truck that you have going on? Um, I'm going to put you on the spot because yeah. I'm excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I don't know too, too much about the food truck, um, but I know that the goal is, is I I think it should be up and running maybe later, like next year. That's what I think the goal is. Um, but yeah, I the goal is to like serve um, like plant-based and like a lot of things that we're sourcing from our uh, farms. So they're going to be, I think they're going to be going around to different school sites and like different events. And they're going to be serving like completely uh, like plant-based items from the the truck but honestly that's that's all I know about it <laughs> that's awesome thanks Emily I'm excited about it because I think there was a student art contest for the design of the truck um yes so, there was yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the final results mm -hmm. all right well I um thank you so much Emily I'm just gonna quickly keep going I just I'm I'm talking this full of lots of cool examples so Christina you're up next <clears throat> hey everyone. So my name is Christina. I'm the director for Western Placer. Um, we are in the process of still solidifying our vegan menu that we're going to roll out mid January. And the idea of just to have a five day vegan menu at our at all of our sites is a third option for everyone at our sec at our primary school sites, but our secondary have a lot more options. Um, we're going to be utilizing a lot of Better Two products, and Chef Two is on this call, so I'm sure he will chat more about all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and then also Alicia and Tamales, uh, we already use a lot of their products, but they partner with Better Two, and they have a vegan burrito, vegan tamales that we're going to be adding on. We're already using those um, currently, but uh, it's just going to be a part of the larger, bigger menu. Um, Chef Two is also to come into tastings for a vegan mac and cheese, which I'm hoping will be ready for us to start in January, but maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more too. And then we're also using Better Two products um, to work on a vegan low main option for our kiddos, which we're really excited about. We're just working out details, but the pictures are actually of us um, 
facilitating a vegan burrito tasting at our one of our elementary schools. Uh, we partner with the UC Co-op Extension to come in and do these tastings with us once a month. And we pick, we talk to the kids, figure out what they want to taste test. And then this is them being very cute doing that. So, yeah, that's all I, that's all I have. There you go. I squealed in delight at these, at these pictures. I'm just like absolutely in love with these photos. Does anyone have any questions for Christina? Um, what are you using for the um, protein source in the lo mein? It's going to be the better to uh, shredded uh, shredded chicken. Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And also shout out to Juan, who's on this call from Vacaville, for introducing us to Chef Chu. So what's up, Juan? So um, this is Melissa. I was wondering, uh, where did you hear about better chew and Alicia's? Uh, actually, both from Juan Gordon, the awesome director over at Vacaville. He um, we've been he introduced us to Alicia's over the pandemic, and we've been using them pretty consistently for the last few years. And then Better Chew, um, he introduced us to Chef Chu in August of this year. Um, and Chef Chu was awesome. Came out and did a taste test for us and tested all the products, and they were delicious. And we kind of just went from there and pulled the trigger pretty quickly. And that's where we are today. So. Are you ordering those direct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And they're wonderful to work with. Very easy. Thank you. And Christina, I think we've got another chat from Julie in the chat. Julie, do you want to come off mute and share? Hi, I want to know how much of it is scratch cooked and has your food cost increased? Um, definitely none of it scratch cooked. We're still working on that. Um, the low main is coming from Gold Star and then the Better Chew products, and we're just going to be mixing them together. Uh, the burritos are already pre made, same thing with everything. Um, so yeah, we're definitely trying to do more scratch cook, but we're just got our CDFA grant to hire a chef, so they won't be here till April. So once they get here, uh, then we'll start moving towards more of that. But for any districts that need a pre-made high quality product, Alicia's and Better Two is a great way to go. Um, and I will say for the people about in real time um, surveys, because we tested out a vegan chicken Caesar with our high school, and we actually just stuck a sticker with a QR code that links directly to a Google form. And we get a lot of responses uh, from our secondary school sites immediately about products when we test them out that way. Alexandra, do you want to come off mute? You actually just answered my question. Like, how are you getting feedback from students? So perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So at secondary, we do QR codes. And then at primary, obviously, we just use our students uh, to do cafeteria based tastings. Awesome. Um, I'm going to go. And Christina, to... can you talk about whether or not your food costs have increased? Hmm. That was another part of Julie's question. Yes, they have. Um, but I will tell you, I'm not that director who really worries about that at all. So I'm not probably a great person to ask that question. Because honestly, if it's a product that our kids like and they're going to eat and not put in the trash, then I will pay whatever price is possible for it. So Ben is like over there celebrating it's for you, Christina. <laughs> Ben is losing it. <laughs> He's so in love with that answer. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to move on um, and put Julie on the spot. Julie, do you want to come off mute and share a little bit about your program? Sure. Hi there. Um, my name is Julie. I'm the director of nutrition services up in Del Norte County. We are the furthest northern county on the coast of California sort of our own little island up here. Um, we have a very rural and um, hunter forward population. Um, so plant-based is not something that is super popular um, with the majority of our, of our folks up here. Um, I signed up for the peer-to-peer -peer learning, le learning series last year for my staff and myself. Um, initially, to 
give my staff something fun to do. Um, we've been so focused on serving ready to eat meals for so long. We were slowly trying to get our staff levels up so that we could um, speed scratch and scratch cook again. And um, my staff, they love to cook. They love, you know, they, they enjoy coming up with new recipes and making wonderful things. And so we started talking about um, plant-based options. And this is what my staff came up with, um, the cowboy caviar. And it is immensely popular with our students. They love it. Um, and we serve it with the Tostitos scoops, which, you know, anytime kids can eat with their hands, they seem to really enjoy it. Um, we started by just serving this to our um, middle school, which is where our central kitchen is located. And kids were coming up for seconds and thirds wanting more of the cowboy caviar. So um, it is in a regular rotation on our menu for this school year. Um, and we're slowly, we just um, got some samples of some different plant-based options that we're gonna roll out and, and try to experiment with. Um, one, one suggestion was to just kind of put it in the menu and not tell people that it was um, plant-based. It's not something that would work well. <laughs> Here in our county, um, if we didn't let people know, I'd probably get a lot of um, grumpy phone calls once people found out that it was plant-based. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where we are. We're, you know, plugging along, trying to come up with new and creative ways to get the kids to want to eat lunch. Thanks, Julie. I love your ambition. I really appreciate you trying something new and involving your staff. That's so wonderful to see. Um, does anyone have any questions for Julie? Okay, with that said, I am, so the way I kind of wanted to do this call is like share some different examples of different school districts at different places, different size school districts, just hear some examples of what everyone's doing on plant-based menuing. I now would love for us to get into some breakout groups, um, probably for about 10 minutes, um, just to chat a little bit about what are you doing in terms of plant-based menuing, what items have been really popular, what's working, what's not working, um, and what do you wanna do in the future? What do you need help with? What's a challenge? Um, you can also talk about whatever you want to talk about. The, this is this is what peer-to-peer -peer learning is all about. So with that said, um, I'm going to break us into some breakout groups. After this um, breakout group session, we're going to kind of switch gears and talk more about plant-based products. And so we've talked about Chef Chu, but um, I'm really looking forward to his presentation and sharing a little bit more. So we'll, um, we'll do that. So I'm going to give us 10 minutes for breakout groups and um give me a moment <laughs> this is where we um really hope that i can do this successfully let's see hey Juan. what's up i got sent back uh we we're closing out the breakout rooms anyways okay. i don't know what happened one it was hilarious we i did a random assignment and you got placed with uh the chef chu team <laughs> yeah, right on like what are the odds it looked like that was uh hey i'm gonna step away for five minutes but i'll come back okay sounds great Juan. all right hey everyone great to see you all right hi everyone we're trickling back i think the breakout rooms are closing out in a couple seconds so We'll give everyone a moment to come back. In progress. Yeah, much in there. All right. Okay, I can think, so I'm going to do a little thinker because of that thing. Hello, welcome back. Um, how's the discussion? How are the conversations? Were there any cool recipes that were shared? Well, we talked mostly about the fact that commodities doesn't give us anything for plant-based. 
but we had some dynamos in our group so <laughs> oh man yeah that is something friends of the earth we are working on to try right. which i stated nora yeah so it's a process that's for sure yes well sarah at monterey gave me the idea for these apple nachos that she serves basically apples with the uh, sun i would do sun butter but and then cranberries and then granola on the side i think yum. that's a great idea yum sarah right on awesome we also do a lot of vegetarian items with uh, commodity beans so i was just sharing with the group that we have a chickpea curry and we'll take advantage of our 80 percent uh, uh, whole grain 20 percent non-whole grain and do it with a jasmine or a basmati rice mm. and then we make a sushi bowl that one i didn't mention but we use edamame um and some uh we we do it vegan so it's an edamame sushi bowl uh and then black beans and rice and and so those all work with some vegetarian commodity foods that sounds really good. Melissa, you'll have to send us over those recipes because um, the curry sounds really delicious. I will. I will for sure. Thanks. Are, is that popular with your students? Uh, it's up in the Bay Area. So yes, we have okay. a, a fairly <laughs> large Middle Eastern Indian population. So sometimes you go in the cafeterias and the kids who um, are bringing their food mm -hmm. This is what gave us, gave us the idea. The kids who were bringing their food from home, the entire cafeteria would smell like curry. And we were like, okay, we got to jump on the bandwagon on this one. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's nothing like that. It's a wonderful aroma. <laughs> it is. That's awesome. Anyone else find any good recipes to share? Okay. Well, with that said, I think I'll turn it over to Chef Chu. Um, I guess before I introduce Chef Chu, um, one of the things that we wanted to do, so my, my vision for this call was really to spend the first half kind of talking about recipes, and then the second half really talking about um, plant-based products, because um, we know that a lot of you are looking for more um, minimally processed plant-based products that are popular with the students. And, um, and so we can definitely go into that, but I also, I reached out to Chef Chu because I think he's got a really great story to share. So I told Chef Chu, I said, please don't make it too much of a sales pitch. Please really try to maybe talk about what your perspective is as a plant-based vendor. And so oftentimes, um, you know, just, like taking a moment to really uh, to reflect on the the impact that um, a relationship can have on both your students, but also on a, a plant based vendor. So Chef Chu, with that said, um, I'll let you go into your presentation. I'm super excited for you to share more on this call. Cool. Um, do you want me to share my screen or do you? Have I, your... I got it, Chef Chu. Okay. There we okay. go. All right, cool. I will just uh, cue you on the next slide. Uh, how much Sounds time do you have again? 10 minutes? Yeah, 10, 15 yeah. minutes is fine. Okay, perfect, perfect. Well, good good afternoon, everybody. My name is, uh, my first name is GW. My last name is actually Chu. It's actually spelled C-H-E-W. Uh, so that's the coolest chef name on the planet. I go by Chef Chu. And as I like to say, as I always say, going to give you something to chew on. And um, so it's it's a beautiful thing. And um, what's cool about me is I actually was adopted at birth. Crazy uh, fun fact: I just met my adopted my adopted father's family, which is pretty awesome. Um, but that was a, amazing. Thanks for the heart. I see you. Um, but that was amazing. But I have this last. I was adopted to a family that had this last name Chu, and I ended up becoming a chef. Um, and so I literally grew up. You can turn to the next slide. Um, and before you go to actually, before you turn, this is actually a picture of. The, but the food that I love, this is my, um, I'm getting feedback. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, this is actually a picture of my family, my two children, uh, enjoying a literally a plant-based dinner, uh, which is so special to me. Um, it's nothing like feeding your kids a traditional ethnic type of meal that I grew up on. I, I grew up in the South, and now they're eating it all 100% plant-based, and they're enjoying it, which I think is what we're trying to accomplish 
here as you know as you all as food directors um but you can go to the next slide uh, again i grew up in the south and so i grew up eating everything i mean my story my father was literally a country boy who grew up shooting squirrels uh, i was 10 years eating possum you know so again grew up eating fried chicken and ribs and pork chops and ham and bacon and everything all of that was my experience growing up as a kid um what was sadly my family began to have a lot of lifestyle diseases so i saw very early uh, my aunts and uncles in their late 40s, early 50s, begin to have life-threatening diseases, diabetes, heart disease, cancer. And for us, it was a way of life. We had, we, we loved to eat, we loved good food, and it was almost expected that we would die from some type of disease. You know, it was like heart disease, diabetes. It just runs in the family. You just kind of expected it. Most of my family members were, were pretty much obese. A lot of them had weight issues. Um, and so it, this was kind of normal, um, which it should not be normal, but it was kind of considered normal. Um, and so I saw, you know, again, family members that I love dearly, my aunts, my aunt, for example, who kind of raised me, um, she died at like 51 years old. And I'm um, seeing uncles who died in their mid 50s. Um, and again, lifestyle diseases based on largely of how we ate. Um, and what we what I found is that it really increases in especially minority communities, black and brown communities typically have the highest rates of disease and the least amount of access. So I saw also this connection between communities that have food deserts where you pretty much don't have, you know, grocery stores or fresh produce. Um, and so things of that nature, those communities you know, have the least amount of access to healthy food options. You know, you might not, like I sell my product to Whole Foods, you know, but the reality is Whole Foods aren't in all communities. Um, some of those natural food stores, some of those more high quality of stores are not in, in all communities. And so people sometimes don't have access to, to these type of products. And as a result, statistics show that they also have higher rates of disease. And so I became a, a vegan and a plant-based chef. Uh, well, I became a vegan first in literally in 2001. So before it was popular, I was literally ostracized by my family. They called me every name in the book. <laughs> so you can imagine coming to Thanksgiving dinner uh, with the vegan turkey, you know, the tough turkey that's like this small and the big fat turkey that my father has. He's like, you're missing out. What are you doing? And it's calling me every name. He's calling me a squirrel. Like, eat like the squirrel, boy. What's wrong with you? You're missing out, you know? So I got that literally when I was 18 years old. I got called every name in the book. But for me, I internalized that I didn't want to see my family continue going through the health issues that they was going through. So that led me to want to change and create foods that they would love. And so that started my personal journey literally 20 plus years ago. You can go to the next slide. And so I became a plant-based chef. And so literally when I was about 19, 20 years old, got excited about eating healthy. Um, since then, I've been, been done restaurants. We now we manufacture. I was voted one of the top nine black vegan chefs in the country. Uh, been involved uh, in, in some of the one group called the Plant-Based Food Association, which you may have heard of. Um, it's actually um, a really cool organization that really helps promote plant-based foods. I was actually an active board member for the last two years um, and been very involved in the natural foods industry as well. I um, mean, there's not a lot of people that look like me also in the industry. Um, so that was pretty awesome um, to be a part of a food you know, space that I could bring diversity into, which was very much needed, um, especially in the plant-based and natural food space. You go to the next slide. So my Products, what we do, um, not a sales pitch, but I will have some fun. Uh, we make our products called Better Chew. I said it looks like chicken, tastes like chicken, but guess what? It ain't chicken. Crispy on the outside and white in the middle. It's delicious. And then for me, that was really very important because I grew up eating a lot of chicken and so, and, and different meat products, and I wanted something better, hence the name of our company. And so I literally made a life journey where it wasn't about just creating a plant based food to make a bunch of money as a company, but it really was a save life. And that became the mission of what we were seeking to do. We, I looked at food as a means of really bringing health and vitality uh, to our communities. And hence, you know, I really wasn't, uh, you know, necessarily ever thinking about actually selling the school districts. It really wasn't something I actually had on my radar. Um, you go to the next slide. Um, but I always had a passion and an aim. Next slide, you can skip this slide. Had a passion and an aim um, to go to do work with kids. And so I actually did a lot of educational work in communities. I would do cooking classes and programs for children. Um, and that became my life work. I had my first restaurant in 2008. And we would 
adopt kids in the community and do cooking classes with them. Um, and so it just really, for me, this whole opportunity when it came to plant-based foods became like, wow, like, you know, California actually is giving free money to schools to help them to go plant-based. It was like, can you believe it? Um, and for me, again, having a passion for kids and having a passion for healthy eating, it was just like amazing to see like the opportunity. So you go to the next slide. So my career, I've done a lot, I do a lot of cooking education. And one of the things I love the most, and when we talk about transformation and change and how do you get kids to get excited and introducing, one of the things that we've seen is that education. You know, it's kind of hard to expect people to change without doing somewhat of some education with them. Um, I found that to be very vital when it came to, you know, I go into communities, not just kids, but adults. And sometimes we're the hardest. Uh, honestly, sometimes even as food service, you know, I went to the, um, to the to the convention down in Southern California and I did a lot of taste samples. And again, there was a lot of still hesitation from to, from directors that were like, ah, I don't know if I want to, you know, try this. And so it was more they had their, you know, people we as adults have our own biases. And what I found with kids, they're still exploring. They're still trying to figure out, you know, they still want. So what I've, what I've learned is that giving them exposure and also getting them involved in touching and, and feeling and, and experiencing healthy foods and so forth could also make a massive impact in getting them to want to transition and to eat healthy as well. Um, and so that's been a big part of my career. And it's, it's amazing when a kid actually has the experience to touch and make a healthy food dish, they eat it because they made it, they experienced it, they loved it. And it also helps to change in their psyche that, hey, maybe this is possible. And even though I never really ate this way, but I, I tasted it and it actually tastes pretty good. And I made it with my own hands. Um, that makes a very massive difference in the, in the child's life. You go to the next slide. There's some other cool pictures um, that we had uh, doing cooking classes with some uh, some older, older kids. Um, this is some high school students that we did on the left. Um, and we literally made vegan quesadillas with these kids. And uh, that was like super, super ex 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 exciting for them. And it was amazing. Like they were like, you know, again, first time eating a plant based cheese, you know, and it was just like the weirdest thing <laughs> for them to imagine. Um, but when they tried it, you know, it was like, wow, this is actually tasty, pretty amazing. Um, another cooking class that we did with another group of young people another uh, more of the little kids. Um, and so again, one of the things I always say, educate, educate, educate. As you guys are bringing on plant-based options, you know, find creative ways to educate the kids. Um, you know, I would love to come out if you wanted me to come do a cooking program. That's something that we do do. I um, mean, there's other chefs, I'm sure, around the country that, you know, around the area that might be able to provide that. But I do know getting kids excited about eating through education and tasting, it, it can go a long way. Um, next thing that was part of my journey, uh, I met Juan Cardone from Vacaville. Um, you go to the next slide, if you don't mind. And he was very instrumental in introducing me to this opportunity. So one thing there, there are people like myself, you know, I'm a small food manufacturer. I, you know, I sell in Whole Foods, sell to a few colleges and so forth. But I had to have a great product and he sought me out and said, hey, there's an opportunity. Um, so he literally as a director sought me out and said, hey, there's an opportunity to bring healthy food. And he introduced me to his friends, you know, which included Christina Lawson and, you know, Napa School District. And so he took on the, the this, the, you know, the, the, the responsibility, or I would say this to, hey, there's some people, there's, there's an opportunity for you. Come and bring your product. Let me see what it tastes like and so forth. And so, and what was that was cool about that? Like Napa, the dietitian, Megan uh, Hupp, um, she actually helped me with my PFS statements. Um, and so I learned, I didn't know much about uh, product formulation statements. Um, and so, you know, again, I've been a chef for plus, you know, 15 plus years, a vegan chef. And I didn't know too much about the dietitian standpoint in the school districts, but I was able to really get a crash course in that. She helped me to figure out the understanding of the, you know, this the grain allowances and the, you know, the meat alternative allowances. It's a whole new language. Didn't even know there was a USA, USDA database and all this type of stuff. And so it was just, I just realized that there's people, other, other chefs like me that would love to support and love to be a part of this. And I just saw that how Juan was very instrumental and Christina as well, um, who was very instrumental in helping and getting you know excited about what we're doing and embraced us and challenged us to say let's figure out some recipes that can be really cool as a result we figured out um a mac and cheese which i'm really really excited about um we actually was able to formulate a recipe utilizing tofu um tofu is a phenomenal rest uh, you know dish you know for every i think quarter cup of tofu is two two meat, meat alternative allowances and i make it i make a cheese sauce out of tofu um so there's so much things you can do with ingredients that i always call tofu a four letter a bad four letter word <laughs> it's kind of cool you know people laugh at that 
but uh, it's amazing what that and recipe and that ingredient can actually do in multiple recipes. And Juan was cool with Juan, but Vacaville and even Christina's school in uh, West Placer, um, we they actually do a, a partner with um, um, Los Tamales. Uh, they do a, a vegan burrito and they use our steak product. Um, and they make um, you know vegan burritos utilizing our products. We're partnering with other vendors and actually being able to collaborate and bringing actually a prepared items to the school districts, which is really, really exciting. But lastly, I wanna end with this, is a few uh, little short videos here. Um, this is some of the experiences that we uh, had at the schools. We did a taste test. Um, I'm not, can you play that? Um, Nora, are you able to play those? Would it sound through? I'm not sure if it will or not. Uh, if it can, I can just kind of share what happened, if that's okay. I think you're on mute. Nora. Yeah, I was asking if the sound was coming through, but I was on mute. So let's try this again. Hold on. Let's see if you like. Got the vegan mac and cheese. Let me know. That ain't bad, is it? Yes. It is because the package one. It's like the package is creamy, right? Come on, man. That's what do you like about it? It's pretty creamy. It's good. Creamy? It's like cheese. It's yeah. cheesy. Yeah, it does. Pretty good. And guess what, man? The good news is that it doesn't have, it doesn't have actually, it's actually, uh, it's all vegan, believe it or not. That's pretty good. Never had vegan cheese before, huh? Oh. Well, there you go, man. I'm glad you like it, man. <laughs> um, hey, we hope it's some. All right, man. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> all right, I'll try yeah. playing another one. Yeah. All right. Uh. Oh. Hey, 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 man, I'm over here today, man, at Glen Edwards Middle School. Just did a, uh, throwing some mac and cheese samples. I got 30 samples of mac and cheese right here. And, uh, man, we about to get the kids something to chew on. About to get them something delicious, man. So I'm really happy, really excited. Thank you for you serving our kids every day. We appreciate your service. And this last, that was with the one of the, um, the actual, I guess, director at that school that actually, um, that ran the kitchen, the lady that ran the kitchen. And it was such a beautiful thing to go in the kitchen with them. Um, and that was really awesome um, at West Placer, uh, Glenn, Glenn Edwards Middle School. And then lastly, we went to the elementary school that was next door and we fed some fourth graders. And that was like the most exp coolest experience ever. Um, and so we actually did like a little kind of little uh, five minute talk about eating healthy and God, they kind of just guess what was in the mac and cheese and they didn't realize it was tofu and it was kind of cool. And this is them at the very end of everything right here. And you couldn't really hear him. She really, she pretty much asked them, do they, do they want to have the mac and cheese in the school? And they got really, really excited about it. It was pretty awesome. But lastly, last slide, I just end on this, you know, um, at the very end, when I was leaving West Placer uh, School District, and literally was amazing. Uh, Christina, I literally had the recipe ready. I was like, can I come? Can I come to the school and uh, test it? And I mean, literally, this was like a Friday or Thursday, and we literally did it like that Monday or Tuesday the next week. And so that was pretty awesome. You know, she was willing to, Christina was really, you know, willing to let me try and see what happened. And I kind of brought that experience together. But at the very end, this is like my best. I got a lot of reviews in my, my business, good and bad. I mean, I'll be honest, I've, you know, in the food industry, you get good and bad reviews, right? You want more good than bad. But one of the fourth graders, one of the young girls in the classroom, uh, I, I still have it right on my desk. It's like, this is how important this is to me. And this is like literally over a month and a half ago, maybe. Um, she wrote that and gave that to me. And she, she just literally put love it. And when she wrote that, it was like such a small gesture, um, but it really was just so special. Um, just to see this, you know, little girl who, you know, never had a plant-based mac and cheese in her life. And she was like, man, this is amazing. Um, and it was just such a special thing. And I think this is what this is all about. Um, you know, kids, when you eat healthy, I, I became, you know, I started eating healthy when I was like 12 years old. I started transitioning into these weird different things with my parents. They were like, why do you want to eat this way? And eventually I became a vegan when I was 18. But the things that, that you know, what we're introducing to these kids at this age, um, can really create lifelong habits, uh, healthy habits. Um, and I believe that, you know, it starts, you know, one of the greatest influences, obviously, our school school lunches um, and, and school meals. And so just know that 
we have a major responsibility, uh, as I like to say, changing lives one shoe at a time. So thank you all for your service. I really appreciate it. It's an honor to be here, and this is amazing for me. I like to say my name is Chef Chu, and as I always say, going to give you something to chew on. Wow, what a way to end. You're getting you're getting some applause for some people. Um, yes, and Lucy, thank you so much. Lucy just dropped Chef Chu's. Um, actually, Lucy just dropped her email, and Lucy can help you connect with Chef Chu if you are interested. So just shoot Chef Chu and uh, shoot Lucy an email, and then she will connect you with Chef Chu. Um, great. Christina, I don't know if you want to add anything just from your end as a, as a director, what it's been like working with Chef Chu or even just working with new plant-based vendors and, um, just anything you want to say there. Um, well, I'll, again, like all the credit to Juan for even just introducing us to Chef Chu and then Alicia over at Alicia's Tamales. Um, it really has just been super easy. They're super like, I don't know. They're just super easy to work with. I'll work with them all day over Gold Star. So I don't know. Like it's just been a great experience all in all. So thank you guys. Thank you, Chef Chu. And also, Chef Chu, like our kids loved having him at the school sites. Our staff loved having him around. So um, it, it really was just a win-win for everybody involved. So. Great. Um, does anyone have any other questions? All right, nobody does. Oh, Sarah, yes. Hey, I was just Googling better chew and with the word K-12 paired with it. And I don't really see anything online, like an online presence. Um, so are we just getting in contact with you, Chef Chu, through Lucy in order to connect in that way? Yeah, when I say this is a, a very new for me, I literally um, this I'm just starting. Um, so this is literally a new opportunity that I'm just learning about. We just got a PFS statements literally like about a month ago. Um, so we're brand new and uh, we just are literally launching, really just hoping to launch strong in January. But yeah, so we, we're next year, we're going to have more materials around this, you know, program, what we're doing. But again, it's, it's such a new experience that we haven't been able to say, hey, um, there was one article that kind of announced, you know, what we're doing, but it's, it's still very new for us. Um, so more will be coming, you know, as far as that. But right now we're just trying to just start small and experiment and learn, you know, before we kind of jump out and say we're, we're the K through 12, you know, company. We just want to learn, honestly, just learn and have fun. And, you know, it's work with directors and then just kind of get exposure and, and experience right now. Chef Chu, would you mind telling the group the products that you have available for um, K-12? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we right now we have a shredded steak. Um, so that's one of our flagship products, a shredded chicken and a shredded steak. Um, those products can literally do one for one for any kind of, uh, you know, Mexican taco, quesadilla, you know, any kind of like a, a, a rice bowl or anything like that. Um, as uh, you know, it also goes very well with like Asian dishes, like um, Christina talked about doing a chow mein, um, things of that nature, lo mein, I should say. Um, we also are, are doing a, again, a plant-based mac and cheese. Uh, which is a, our newest product, our newest innovation, uh, which we're really excited about. Um, I just, I'm working with uh, Lucy right now. Lucy challenged me to create a ground beef crumble. And Lucy, I have the recipe and a meatball, and I will be sharing that with you soon. Uh, so we'll be actually bringing that. Um, and what's cool about our products, lastly, is that for every, it's pretty much a one for one. So for two ounces of, of protein, it's two ounces of meat alternative allowance. Um, and so it's kind of a one to one, you know, two ounces is two ounces of meat allowance, meat, meat alternative allowance, meat, meat alternative allowance. And our mac and cheese is two ounces of uh, for every one serving. Um, it's also two ounces of meat alternative and one ounce of grain, um, grain allowance as well. And so, you know, we've been able to really kind of get to the, the PFS, you know, to, you know, make sure it kind of meets the necessary qualifications and stuff. So, um, yeah, we have lastly, we have a chicken nugget, um, but we do fry it. Um, so that's something that we're hoping to transition to more of a baked option and things of that nature. But um, we do have some, that's our best seller in Whole Foods, believe it or not. Um, but it is fried. You know, we do do a par fry on it. So we're working on some formulations on where it's not fried, like not a fried product. So, yeah. Could you also talk about the rib 
please? Oh, yes, yes. We have a rib. Looks like a rib, tastes like a rib, but guess what? It's not a rib, right? Um, it's a very meaty like texture. Um, our, what's interesting about our, our texture is that most of the products in the, in the space use a kind of like a vertical, like extruded type of process. Um, we kind of have a horizontal kind of layered texture. Um, so it really has a meat form, like a true meat. Um, so you can really replicate it um, and utilize it for a lot of plant-based dishes. And so the rib is really awesome, especially more for, for K through. I mean, uh, uh, the high school kids uh, might be more, uh, you know, for that age group. Um, but it's it's a it's very meaty, very meat-like a rib sub, or you know, even like a standalone product, you know, like a rib, you know, kind of this. Like a, as a rib, you know, it can be standalone like that as well. So um, some cool innovation that we've been able to do um, and been very successful in market. Um, we, you know, we're in Whole Foods uh, and, and a number of grocery stores and restaurants. And so um, been able to really do well, you know, in the market. Um, so this is new. Um, and like I said, we're just here to have fun and, and learn and, um, and just see what, see what the future holds. When Chef Chu had us tasting the rib, just so you all know, he presented it in a hoagie roll as kind of a uh, rib sandwich with the barbecue sauce. And it was absolutely delicious. And I thought of how much the high school kids would love something like that, middle school, high school kids. So uh, that's why I asked him to talk about the rib. Well, thanks, Chef Chu. Um, I guess just my last question for you, Chef Chu, is like any any final words of advice for any school districts that are considering working with small vendors like yourself? Yeah, you know, what I would say, you know, it, it's such an amazing, the impact that you all have in helping small businesses is just, it's just it, you can't put a price on it. Um, to kind of give you an example, I got my first POs from Vacaville, you know, from West Placer and Napa. That allowed me to open up an opportunity for when I went to a bank, um, they literally was like, yo, like this is coming together. And I was able to get, it, it helped. I was applying for almost a, almost 900,000, close to a million dollars in financing for equipment. And it kind of was the thing that took me over the threshold. Um, and so just understand that when you give a purchase order to a small company, um, it, it's significant, the impact that it gives to a small business um, and I'm a minority business. And so it was just amazing um, when a small company, normally, you know, the big companies in our space, a lot of times are talking about going into school districts, but when a small company can get an opportunity, it just, it's a, it's a life altering experience for companies like us. So I just want to say like adopt, adopt a company in your community. Um, you're changing the trajectory of that company when you actually give them a shot. Um, and give them feedback, you know, it's like, you know, like, we want to learn, I've not, you know, sometimes, you know, you might not hit the home run the first time, but, you know, Lucy was like, try this out, think about this, and so there's needs, there's a level of coaching, you know, Juan and Christina has a lot of questions that I had, and they both were literally, I, I can call Juan right now, and I'll call Christina right now, and they took the time, like, what, what do you think about this, what about this, and how do I do this, and it was like, they actually invested into me, um, and I think that was just like very, very emotional, like on a, it's on a, on a personal level that they would do that. Um, and then as a business, it just really, again, it gives us credibility uh, as we get, you know, a contract with the school, like a school district. It's not a light thing when that happens for a small company. So just know that you can really make an impact in small companies futures um, by you actually just supporting us and giving us a shot. Thank you, Chef Chu. I appreciate that. You're getting you're getting snaps and thumbs up in the in just all over the place. So thank you so much, Chef Chu. All right. Well, now is the portion of the conversation where I'm wondering. There's kind of two directions that I could go. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, the first direction is I think we can all get into some small breakout groups and talk about products and what products are working well, what products aren't. Uh, what are you looking for in products? Um, the other option is we can kind of go into some other products that we've been working with and kind of share that out with you. Um, so is there a direction that you all are interested in? Can you put in the chat which one you, you'd be interested in? Breakout groups, presentation on plant-based products. All right, I'm seeing breakout groups and products. Okay, great. <laughs> Score is one to one. I think we're getting a little more on, on products. 
<laughs> All right. We'll do products and then we'll be sure to, during our February call, maybe have more of a breakout group discussion on products. Um, so Lucy, are you okay if I share my screen of on course. the products list? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. So I'm going to exit out and I'm going to show you all um, a products list that Friends of the Earth created over the summertime. So um, during the summer, Lucy and I got together and we were like, okay, what are some non-GMO plant-based products that are out there that are minimally processed um, and that are, you know, easy to work with, you know, have experience working with school districts and that we would want to work with. So um, while Friends of the Earth does not endorse any of these products, we did kind of vet them for being a non-GMO plant-based company. And so we kind of put together this list. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat and I'm going to share my screen and I'm just gonna have Lucy kind of go through. Can you all see my screen okay? Maybe. Little um, bit. Okay, I'm getting thought. Okay, I'm getting nuts. All right. Um, so I'll let Lucy kind of start this off. So Lucy, if you don't mind just kind of going through this. And we'll of skip course. around. I don't think we're gonna go through all of them. We're just gonna choose a couple of them just to highlight to everyone. Of course. Thanks, Nora. So um as Nora said, we put this list together. This is a working document. So we're still adding more vendors as we connect with them and establish a relationship with them um, to support our K-12 school districts. Um, if you see any products here, I will say this first, that you're interested in, all of these plant-based vendors are very, very wonderful about sending samples. So um, some of you um, that have worked with me on getting samples and have gotten samples know that you can get samples for any of these products. Um, I put my um, email address in the chat a little while ago so you can all have it and I can put it in there again. Um, so if you want samples of any of these products, please get in touch with me and I will make sure that you get your samples. So these are all alphabetical. We started with Better Chew, who you just heard from our fabulous Chef Chew about his products. Um, and as Nora said, these are all plant-based, non-GMO. Um, some of them are minority owned or women owned. And um, that's a plus for Friends of the Earth as well. We started with um, just alternative proteins. So chicken, sausage, meatballs. Um, so we have Chef Chew's products. Um, uh, we have Dr. Prager's, who some of you have used in the past. Don't scroll so fast, please. Okay. <laughs> um, and we also, they do have some CN labels. Chef Chu did mention that um, he has PFSs on a lot of his products. Um, really, that's kind of our goal working with our vendors is to make sure that they either have a CN label or a PFS for you before we would send you a sample of anything because we know how important it is for you to have that documentation. So Dr. Prager's has a list of many things. They've been around a long time. Um, they are also all non-GMO and certified kosher. Um, and then Don Lee Farms, who many of you have worked with in the past, um, their black bean burger does have a CN label. Um, and I believe that uh, Jennifer told me that the veggie burger is getting a CN label right now. So they are California owned and operated non-GMO. Um, Greenleaf Foods, who has two subsidiaries, um, Field Roast Foods and uh, Light Life. You may have seen some of their products in the grocery stores. Um, I, they have a plant-based pepperoni, which would be really great to use for a homemade pizza. Um, they have uh, bacon, they have the burgers, they have chicken breast, they have smoky tempeh. So they have some very nice products as well. Then we have a very interesting vendor, Green Boy Foods, who does protein powders. Um, they're based in LA, so they're locally owned. Um, 
they have less than six to seven ingredients, also non-GMO. These would be really great in smoothies, but we're not really sure if it would fit into the USDA requirements for um, visible product um, in something that you're serving. Um, then we have Hungry Planet, who um, was also at CSNA this year. You may have tasted some of their products. They have a whole list of products. A lot of these things are not available to school districts. So unfortunately the crab cakes, which are totally delicious, are not available to school districts, but they do have a nice um, beef patty. They have crumbles, they have meatballs. So also all non-GMO product formulation statements for everything which I help them with, with CDE. So those are all set to go and approved. Um, and then nowadays are the chicken nuggets, um, beautiful, clean products, seven ingredients, non-GMO. Their PFS is complete as well. And they have a grain and a meat alt uh, PFS. Yeah. So they'll have a component of each one of those. Some of you have received these nuggets. They have uh, gluten-free and non-gluten-free. Rebellious, who you probably, some are using, some of you are using. I know some of the districts I work with serve the nuggets and the um, tenders. Uh, they have very nice products as well. There are two uh, meat alt, uh, PFS available, non-GMO, woman founded and operated. And then we have Daya, which uh, some of you have received samples from um, already they are plant-based cheese so they have shreds slices uh, cheese sticks and the cream cheese which i'm actually going to tell emily about i put that in my notes at santa anna so um she may have an interest in that plant-based cream cheese all really nice products non-gmo they're very very nice about sending samples of anything you might want uh, follow your heart. These are the egg guys, the follow your heart and the veg scramble. And I believe zero egg, which should be on here. Um, zero egg, which is not here, but I'll tell you a little bit about them. They're a new vendor I started working with. They are based in Brentwood in the Bay area. Uh, they have two very beautiful products, a liquid egg and an egg patty, which would be a very nice product for either a breakfast sandwich like an egg McMuffin or if you wanted to serve that in lunch some of the districts like to do 